case study that we're going to go over right now is Project Everyone, which really talks about how we're going to implement the SDGs and the different, uh, the different 17 different initiatives. And Jacob Trollback, who's the chief creative officer of the Trollback and Company, Corinne Woods, who's a special advisor to the post-2015 development agenda, and myself will tell you a little bit about you know, how we're looking at the messaging as it relates to the MDGs, to the SDGs, and what that means, and then how we're gonna look to ask you for your help on how that actually gets executed, not just regionally, but globally. Thank you very much, Sergio. I'm Corinne Woods, and um, it's a pleasure to be here with Sergio and the Public Foundation. It's a fantastic opportunity to be with many people who I already know and have met before, many people we as the UN have been working with, so we're in a point in progress. As Mitchell was saying, we've worked with many of you in the last three years, and we hope to continue to work with you. We're all of us hybrids. We start with one agency, we move across to another organization, and I actually am a UN staff member, very, for the first time, seconded to the UN Foundation to help do exactly the idea that we believe, which is to start from the UN and genuinely bridge out to work with people like you. So I'm going to do something which I think should be symbolic, which is I'm going to go from sitting here behind the dais formally sitting here, I'm going to walk and stand there to show you that we are moving to partner with you and come to the ground. I think the first thing to say is, within the UN, and, and um, Thomas talked about a small engine room, there's an engine room of people, many of whom you'll meet, sitting within Amina Mohammed's office, some working on climate, some working on the development goals, within the partnerships teams and within the UN Foundation, all of whom who are thinking strategically, what is it we need to do? And I know you, one of the things is planning. You guys are in the business of planning, strategy, future, not just quick fixes. So there is a strategy. We have a plan. How you, the gap always between a plan and a reality is one of the greatest challenges. Everybody can write great plans. How do you deliver great plans? So I want to just point to the plan, talk a little bit about some of the pieces that are already in place, lay out the largest opportunity we have in terms of really making the plan a reality, and then turn to my great colleague, Jakob Trollback, on what will be the foundation for the plan? I keep on trying to think of architecture and building analogies. My husband's an architect, and I've decided I've got confused. So I'll try and do this anyway. Let's just say, and Thomas said it, but let's remind you. We're sitting here with a plan that says, right now we have a moment leading into the year, which is a drum roll. It's the moment where we've really got to start to take all the voice we have, all the interests we have, and drum roll into a couple of key moments. Oh, someone's being very efficient. Yeah. And we have... Oh, <laughs> thank you. Wow. First, we know we've got three moments. And I'll just remind you, because those are three key moments. Financing for development, which is in July. We all know, where's the money coming from to make this happen? Where's the fuel coming from? We call it means of implementation. But basically, all our vision that Nicole spoke so eloquently about... You've got to have that fuel to do that. So in July, there is a moment where that conversation is start, going to start being synthesized. In September, there is a key moment in time where the gavel comes down and comes down hard. How do we make that moment an extraordinary moment? And then we come to what my colleague Dan in the SG's office says continually, that's the moment where the rubber hits the road. Are we going to get an agreement on the climate side that really will actually make this work? So this year is key in terms of a drum roll. Oh, now I'm in charge of this. I can do that. <laughs> do I just press that one? The right one, I think. The right one. Okay. No. So let's just talk about the summit. The summit will be 72 hours. It's our... Oh, the summit will be 72 hours. It will be a key moment in time. It's an extraordinary thing. If any of you... How many people have been to the UN before? Quite a lot of you. And some of you are new. Every time I come to these sorts of rooms, I think this is, this is like nowhere on earth. 
And when you go into the General Assembly, it's even more like nowhere on earth in terms of an extraordinary place. Somehow we've got to communicate the extraordinary moment where 193 member states come in and agree, agree a plan for the planet. That's an amazing moment in time. If we, as a group of communicators, can't tell that story, we need to go back to selling toothbrushes and bins. I mean, it really is something amazing, and we need to find a way to do it. So we're going to call on your help to make that happen. But then what happens, and this is what Mitchell was talking about, the challenge, make the global goals famous and owned by people everywhere. Seven billion people. That's what we want to be able to do. It's a large ambition, but it's an ambition we should stand up to because we are, it is we the peoples. We have to find a way to do that. So we have some things in place. The first fundamental thing is we as the UN being relaxed and letting go and saying there are people like you here who know how to communicate. You know how to get to people. You have platforms to get to people. You know how to do it. So if you know how to do it, we should welcome and encourage you to do that because the goals are the world's goals. So we should do that. And we should welcome and encourage your brands to do that. We should welcome and encourage ways in which we do that and say we are a big party and we all need to come to that. So that's the first thing. And then we need to say, how do you create ownership? So it's not just this big monumental year, but what happens in 2017? Is there real ownership? What happens in 2018 and 2030? So it is a plan for the planet owned by everyone. Now, we already have in place a number of things, a number of partnerships that sit there. We'll turn in a minute to Jacob, who has been working with Richard Curtis, the filmmaker and activist. Does everybody know who Richard Curtis is? Does anybody not know who Richard Curtis is? Okay, Richard Curtis. Does everybody know Four Weddings and a Funeral? Okay, enough said. <laughs> we were going to trip, just play you a load of clips, but then we thought... Um, he's given up a year of his life and brought 20 or 30 professional communicators and marketeers to become the outer circle on that small strategic engine room to say, let's help you make this happen. But always, you, we say, that's great, but it's necessary but not sufficient. We need more people, which is why we're helping you're going to come. So we already have this idea of partnerships of people coming together. So Jacob and Richard, I think, met on a plane or met somewhere, and Jacob has, is going to talk to you about this foundation of the visual language. But we have people in the room who are already working on things. We have a fantastic piece of work, which is about comic books that you'll see in here, and a whole team of people who are working on how do you use comics and comic characters to communicate. We also have Jimmy Whale has joined forces with... Does everybody know who Jimmy Whale is? Yeah, okay. Sometimes UN people, we don't know who Jimmy Whale is. To, Jimmy Whale is Mr. Wikipedia. So to translate and get the goals out in that way. We also have, and I know many of you, a communication core who have come together, PR and advertising agencies, and said, what are the things you need as the UN? Do you need messaging? Do you need media placement? Helping us do that. And you'll hear at lunchtime, Gates Foundation and the Global Poverty Project talking about their global citizen. What I'm saying is we've got lots of people coming together, but it's necessary but not sufficient. So this is where we hope you'll join us. So reaching 7 billion people. We've done a bit of the maths, or if you're American, the math, on working out how do you reach 7 billion people? Mobile, faith-based groups, broadcast, online, and I'm sure you could t help us say what you're missing is, this is how you could do it better. And we've started to develop some ideas of some campaigns. The world's largest prayer. The faith-based groups are getting together to think about, could you have a moment of faith recognition of the new goals? The world's biggest connection, mobile operators. The world's largest lesson, the idea that there's a lesson being designed, and I know the comic book is going to be part of that. So there are some plans in place. But, and what is wonderful about Sergio and the Public Foundation, oh, I've now lost it. That was my big reveal. The world's largest advertising campaign. <laughs> but we've thought, before we give him a round of applause, we should probably give you a round of applause, because... 
I'm going to say this, he can't do it without you. I mean, frankly, we're holding him to account for what you deliver for him. <laughs> so he's feeling the pain, it's up to you. So this is a moment where we can talk about that. Can we make that work? How can we do it? And I know there are some people we've already talked to who've committed, so thank you. And I hope there are others that will do that. But let me now just turn to the foundation. The foundation of any of this stuff has to be the visual language. When we say 17 goals and all the really smart stuff that Nikhil and Thomas and Mitchell were talking about, what's our basic visual language? Have we got the basic stuff done? Well, one of the first people to step up was Jakob. And so I'd like to hand over to Jakob, who now will talk about the visual language, what's been done to date, and what gives you the foundation from which you can build everything. Thank you. So <clears throat> I'll stand up too, uh, and uh, I'm so incredibly honored to be involved in this, uh, which all started uh, as uh, you heard with Richard meeting me and said he actually wanted to talk about another project, which was the Red Nose Day project, and then he said, and if you're interested, I have this crazy idea which is about spreading a message to seven billion people. And I said, well, I'm, I'm there. So um, what he sent me a couple of, of weeks later was this. And I said, well, this is going to be popular. Uh, so I, we, I started to read through it and try to distill the, the essence of all of these 17 goals. And uh, so... And we started by thinking that every challenge you have, you need to start to look at a goal and have that set up. And I think we've heard a lot of that, how we envision the future. So the goals needed short names. And uh, reading through all of the different goals, uh, we came up with something that was like this. Oops. There. So imagine a world where there's no poverty and no hunger. We have good health quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, modern energy, good jobs and economic growth, innovation and infrastructure, global prosperity, sustainable cities and communities, and responsible consumption. It's a future where we protect the planet and have healthy life below water and life above water. We have peace and justice and strong partnerships for the future. So those are the goals. And uh, this is still a little bit of work in progress. Uh, we have one or two goals, uh, especially goal number 10, that is a placeholder. So uh, don't tweet that one yet. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a tricky one. It's, it's resisting to getting uh, condensed into a couple of words. Uh, but to do that also felt that we needed to illustrate this and make this something that could be household items for people and media organizations and NGOs, etc. So we started to do a series of icons. And here are those. And they're almost finished. Uh, some of them are very abstract to put into uh, an image, but uh, we're very happy with where we are, even though gold number 10, as I said, is going to change. <laughs> And then we were starting to say, how can we make these, uh, these different goals uh, something that people can relate to? So we started to think uh, about different pieces of a tool toolkit. And we're going to work with uh, finding the best, most inspiring quotes from uh, the most amazing people all over the world, many of them within this organization. And then it can look something like this. And the color fields is what happens when you transfer from keynote to PowerPoint. <laughs> uh, so we have quotes from Mandela. We have quotes from Martin Luther King. We have quotes from, these are also just placeholder, but, but this is something that we think that we can have a lot of people sort of helping us to, to crowdsource the best, uh, the best uh, uh, quotes for all of these things. Um, obviously, education, we don't have to question where that quote is going to come from. I'm not going to read all of this because I'm going to go over time. Um, 
and also people who have popularized different things. So we're very, we're very excited of, of starting to see sort of how all of these pieces fit together. And uh, we have, even though uh, it's going to be a, a large part of this is to, to figure out the outcome and the indicators that we can illustrate, uh, but we've started to think about how we can uh, apply a visual language that's going to be for, uh, for data visualizations and, and such. So uh, that's just a couple of those pieces. Um, we've also been starting to think about advertising, and this is obviously uh, what we've done from, from the point of view of a, of a largely graphic design company. Uh, but um, we just think it would be cool to see this out and about, and also then with, with quotes and, and icons. And uh, for the launch, of course, we want to project on the on the UN building. Uh, we, also, uh, we also have been starting to work on something that's uh, a manifesto for all of the 17 goals. And um, this is also very much a work in progress, uh, but uh, it's here. We live in times of great uncertainty. Conflict, injustice, and poverty surrounds us. Even the very planet we inhabit seems to threaten our survival. Our challenges are serious, but our history is full of inspiring moments. We have set our differences aside and worked for something bigger than each of us. This is one of those moments. If we take action, we can build a better world for everybody and leave a much brighter future for our children. With your help, we can be the first generation to defeat extreme poverty, the most determined generation to tackle injustices, and the last generation to be threatened by climate change. Together we can build a world that we will all be proud to live in. Join us, this is the time, and this is the plan. Only to say, I don't think any of this would be possible without the fantastic leader leadership from the Department of Public Information. And you'll be hearing from Christina Galash uh, this afternoon, who is our Under Secretary General. And there are people from the Department of Public Information throughout this meeting. Um, and also to say, and I think this is a firm principle, we have a plan. But in the new world of plans, as I was talking to somebody yesterday, you have a plan and you learn that your plan is not good enough because someone else comes and tells you this is a much better thing, this is a, a, a way we can take this further. This is not a hard, firm plan that says here is the work of Jacob and this is fixed and everything. We are so open to many different creative ideas, many different ways of doing this. There are a million ways to walk through the door of this new agenda we need to find those million ways to walk through the door. So don't be constrained by the fact that we seem to have got, in some way, our act in order and thought about it. We need every offer that there is to get this to 7 billion people and create real ownership and a commitment long-term to the future. We will be with you. Sergio knows this because he's sick of me calling him. We will be with you and we will accompany you through this so that it's a genuine partnership from now to 2030 when we're all old people with Zimmer frames. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sick of her calling me. She's got a British accent, so it's actually it's, it's great to hear her call me. <laughs> Um, you know, so listen, uh, really important here, I think it's one of the important factors that we started with this is because it's called Project Everyone, right? Everyone here has the ability to impact change. Everyone here has done campaigns, has done initiatives, has created brands that has impacted people, has impacted not just millions of people, but multicultural, multi-geographic, multi-dimensional, multi-asset based, whatever platforms from social media to out of home to magazines to television shows. And we all have the ability, and I think what Corinne was saying was, that we want all of you, this is why, again, we led with Yaakov because of what, how they started this initiative and they came to the United Nations and they said, hey, look, we could help you sort of visualize this and get people really excited to understand what it is that these goals mean because what are 17 goals? You're all sitting here saying, well, I didn't do my homework. You know, what does each goal mean? 
And, and so what they're trying to do is actually create the visual elements, the logos, that then will allow us to create further executions and be able to translate that further to civic society. So that's really important, and again, why we started with the case study of Project Everyone, because they did get up, lead, and, and execute with this vision. And, and this is what it's all about. This is why it's called the United Nations. It's about everyone. And so we're excited, again, to keep you stimulating your, your, your brains and get you to start thinking about sort of what, what do you think can be done.